Hello everyone, this is chess expert Dave Velascom, and today I'm going to go over a game that took place in the 2020 Speed Chess Championship. Now, on the white side of the board, we have Grandmaster Nihal Saren from India. He's quite strong, very, very good. And then on the black side of the board, we have Grandmaster Maxime Fakir de Grave. Now, we're going to be following this game from black's perspective, but we will also go over some of the really good moves that White played and the ideas behind them because there's a lot of rich strategic content in this game and it, it makes it pretty good. So here, um, Black plays Queen out to b8 and we can look at Black's position and we can see that this bishop over here on d7 is locked inside of the pawn structure and that's not very good. The bishop is quite passive. So what Black is going to do is he's going to play c5 and get this bishop into the game. And we're going to see exactly how he does that. Um, if Black can get his bishops on some really active squares, then his position will improve considerably. So here White plays knight e4, and this is another really important uh, strategic concept from Black's perspective. Since Black's position is a bit cramped and he needs some some room for his pieces to breathe, um, it makes a lot of sense for him to go ahead and trade off this knight. And that is exactly what he does because now this star squared bishop is controlling some more squares. So that did improve Black's position a little bit. And now he plays b6 and he's going to play c5. And this is quite good because then it frees up room for the bishop. And here, Maxime Vakiot de Grave is not that concerned about his new weakness on c5 because his bishops are better. And that definitely outweighs the, uh, the disadvantage of that pawn. And he also has this half open file, which he can, uh, use to apply pressure to white's pawns as well. So, those ideas are enough compensation for the pawn weakness. And here Maxim decides to go on this rapid queenside expansion, uh, or kingside expansion, but, um, you know, it, it does have some drawbacks. Um, the good point about this is that the bishop had to retreat, so it's not as good on e2 and the king over here on g2 is going to have a harder time getting into the game so like black so like um black's king could potentially march over here and become a really active participant but the white king has um a harder time getting into the center of the game it's going to take a bit longer and so that is perhaps the idea behind this pawn expansion but the drawback, though, is that this pawn on e6 is now incredibly weak. And we're going to see how white goes after that pawn. And this is also really instructive. It's a very good strategic idea that you want to go after the base pawn, which is the pawn that is supporting the, the pawn chain, the pawn that is the furthest back, because that is the weakest link. And if you can take uh, this e6 pawn and get rid of it, then the rest of the pawns would fall. And so that is that is um, the idea here. Now, I would like to go back a few moves. Okay, so after this, black actually could have played bishop out to c6. And this is the very best move, and it would have allowed black to get his bishops into the game. And so that was, you know, the whole point of playing b7 to b6 and pushing this pawn out to c5 is to get this bishop in the game, but NVL decides not to. Um, and now he has to passively defend this pawn. Now there are um, some ideas. So when you have a pawn weakness, you either want to trade off that pawn weakness, thereby improving your position, or if you cannot trade it off, then you want to move that pawn weakness so that it's no longer a target. 
And that is exactly what NVL does here. And since the knight is attacked, uh, white does not have time to simply move this bishop. So the bishops are going to be traded off. And really, when you have the bishop here, you want to keep them. But this bishop here on f7 is not a very good piece. And so it does make sense to trade it off. Um, you know, it would have been a lot better if black had played the bishop out to c6 a few moves back. And here, uh, white misses an opportunity. Yeah, there's this really cool opportunity of pushing the pawn out to e4. Because, um, let's say that black takes. Then at this point, the rook will move somewhere, um, maybe out here, and the knight's going to move here. And this knight is going to stop these pawns. These pawns are incredibly weak. And it's also going to attack g4. So this would have been white's best chance at winning. And it would have really ruined black's pawn structure. But um, I think that white played it a bit too late. Because we got to c4. And now white plays it. But here, it's not very good. Yeah, because here, um, the knight is, well... There's no good move, because if the knight moves here to defend the rook, then, you, you know, you just take the knight. So here white is losing material. Yeah, it would have been a lot safer to have played it back here, because at this point, um, the knight is not under attack. But after the knight comes under attack, once e4 is played, then it just it costs um, white a lot of material. Yeah, there's just too many pieces under attack, and here both the rook and the knight are under attack. And so after a few more moves, white just resigns. So that was really unfortunate. Um, it's just a you know, really small detail, because the strategic idea was great, but um, you know, it, uh, when this rook is attacking the knight, it just doesn't work as well because of the tactics. But I just wanted to show you guys those really cool strategic ideas, you know, like how to improve your bishops if they're really passive and, you know, trying to target the the base of the pawn because that's the weakest part. And then also, you know, this really cool idea of e4 just to destroy the pawn structure.